the following exercises determine whether there is a minimum or a maximum value to each quadratic function, and then we need to find that value and the axis of symmetry. Okay, so I have two quadratic functions here. Let's work with the one on the left first. First, we're going to discuss whether or how we can tell if there's going to be a minimum or a maximum, okay? So you should know that there are two different types of quadratic functions. So either write this down because I'm not going to have enough room here. So I'm probably going to have to erase it at some point. But just know that, you know, their quadratic functions are either smiling at you, right? Here's a smile, right? The teeth are right here, I guess, right? Is that how you smile? I know that's how I smile. <laughs> or they're frowning at you, okay? So they're very simple. They're either going to be smiling or they're going to be frowning. Now, the turning point, which is called the vertex, how I drew it, the vertex would be right here. It's the turning point between going like down to coming back up. You see that? It basically breaks the quadratic into two parts. And the vertex over here, the way that I drew it kind of looks like over here, right? It splits the graph into two components, one that's decreasing on this side and one that's decreasing on this side. And the same thing goes for this one as well, right? So the vertex is a huge component of our quadratic formula. Now, just know that when you're smiling, the vertex, which is a point, will be the minimum value of the graph, right? You can't go any lower than the vertex. So when you're smiling, or when the quadratic is smiling, you will have a minima, right? Or it's called the minimum value, whichever one you want to say. The frowny one, and I'll say that over here, this is smiling, smileys, this is frowning. The maximum, well, I just gave it away, right? The vertex is the highest portion of the graph, right? Can't get any higher than the maxima. So if you have a frowning um, quadratic function, you have a maxima or a maximum value. Sorry for my terrible handwriting. I'm just trying to write fast. Okay, now how do we know if a graph is going to be smiling or frowning at us? The answer lies in the A value, okay? And it goes with the context of smiling versus frowning. If you're smiling, right, you're happy. I mean, you know, in a, in a very general term, right? <laughs> so smiling is positive, right? You're positive, you're smiling. So my A value has to be positive here. Frowning, negative, sad, that goes together. And remember, the A value is always in front of the X squared value. So in the first example, my A value is equal to two. It's a positive value. So I know that I'm going to have a minimum value. It is this type of graph. It's a smiley face. Now the whole thing is that we need to know what the value is and what the axis of symmetry is. Okay, so I'm gonna have to erase these graphs because now I'm gonna have to do the algebra, right? So if you want, pause the video, write this down, but I gotta get rid of it, unfortunately. Oh, I hate to see my work go, but that just leaves more room for more work. Okay. So now we need to find that value of the minimum here. Minimum value. And how we do that is by going by what that vertex is. Now remember, a vertex, the standard form is H comma K, right? The value of the minimum is always going to be your k value, mainly because the k, if I turn this into x comma y, the y axis gives you the highest point or the lowest point, the max or the min. So 
the value of the minimum will be the k value. The axis of symmetry is the other guy. The axis of symmetry is h. So, and I'll put that in quotes here because there has to be something that we have to do when we state what the axis of symmetry is, but I'll tell you when we get there. So just know that in, in general, the k value is going to be that value of the minima. The h value is the axis of symmetry. So now, how do we get h and k? Well, remember, we've done tons of problems where we have been finding h and k, so we're going to run through it, right? In order to find an h, and you'll always find an h first, and you could think of it like that way because... You know, h comes before k in the alphabet. Remember that h just equals negative b divided by 2a. I have a, b, and c values here. So let's just quickly go over it. I have a 2, I have a negative 10, and I have a positive 4. So my a value is 2, my b value is a negative 10, and my c value is 4. So... I'm just plugging in my values, negative b, which is a negative 10, divided by 2 times 2, 2 times a, right? So I clean this up. This would be 10 over 4. And if I just simplified, right, what number is common between 10 and 4? A 2. So 4 divided by 2 is 2. 10 divided by 2 is 5. So I have an h value of 5 over 2. Remember, this is the axis of symmetry. Now, remember I said that I have to, you know, tell you a little bit more context for axis of symmetry? When we're saying that it's an axis of symmetry, I can't say H. Technically, it's incorrect. But remember, H is the same thing as X. And since a graph is based off of X and Ys, that's why you have to say my axis of symmetry is X x equals 5 over 2. Technically, if you say the axis of symmetry is h equals 5 over 2, I would have no idea what you're talking about because the graph is x and y. So that we found the first part. This is the axis of symmetry. Now, what this actually means in context is if I go over on my x to 5 over 2, so let's just say that, I don't know, it's somewhere over here, right? That is the turning point of the graph. Now, we already discussed that we're going to have a minimum value because this is smiling. But now here's the question. Is my graph like this? Well, actually, let me make it a little bit, right? Because that has to be the turning point. Is it like this? Is it like this? Right? Is it like this? We don't know what that max or min val the min value is yet, right? My min value could be all the way up here. It could be maybe at the origin. I don't, you know, or it could be at the bottom. So, yeah, let's find out that value. And remember, that's the k value. So the second thing that we have to do is find that k value. And remember, the k value just equals f of h. What you're going to do is you're going to plug in the h value into the formula. So instead of it being 2x squared minus 10x plus 4, I'm going to plug in my 5 over 2 for all of my x values. So it was really 2x squared minus 10x plus 4. But now for all the x's, I'm going to input, and I'll put over here, that was a 5 over 2. So if I color code this, it would be 2 times 5 over 2, and that's all squared, minus 10 times 5 over 2, plus 4. So, let's get it done. We first got to do the exponent, 5 over 2 times 5 over 2, that's x, uh, that's, you know, 5 over 2 squared. Multiplying fractions, I multiply the numerator, I multiply the denominator. So 5 times 5 is 25, 2 times 2 is 4, so this would be 2 times 25 over 4. Okay, let's keep it moving. 
I have 10 times 5 over 2. I can simplify this. I have a 2 on the bottom. 2 and 10 are, you know, common, right? 2 times 5 will get me 10. So now I just have 5 times 5, which is a uh, 25. So minus 25 and then plus 4. Let's clean this up, right? I have a two in the numerator, I got a four in the denominator, two times two is four, so this would be the same thing as 25 over two. So now I have, if I can just get rid of this, I can say that this is 25 over two. Now at this point, remember this still equals k, I'm trying to find that value, the minimum value, 25 over two minus 25 plus four, um, you can just plug this into the calculator. I just like to work with fractions. It kind of gives you guys, you know, being more comfortable with fractions. So I want to turn this into a common denominator. I see that my only denominator is two. So I want to make all of these over two. But remember, they're over one now, right? Both of these. So what would I have to do? Well, I would have to multiply by two. But I got to be fair. Whatever I do to the bottom, I got to do to the top. So this would be 25 times 2 over 2. 25 times 2 is 50, right? So I can just say that instead of saying minus 25, I can say that this is minus 50 over 2. 25 divided by 2 is 25. Uh, 50 divided by 2 is 25. And then 4 times 2 is 8 over 2. So instead of saying 4, I could say 8 over 2. And remember, when you're adding and subtracting fractions, you only do the adding and subtracting on the top. You keep that denominator by itself. So the k value, uh, which is the value of the minimum, would be 25 minus 50. This is a negative 25, right, plus 8. This is all over 2. So negative 25 plus 8, let's just... Do that quick, neg negative 25 plus 8 is a negative 17. So this would be equal to negative 17 over 2. And that is your k value. That is your minimum value. So if I just give you some context, and here is my graph again, we knew from before the axis of symmetry was 5 over 2, so somewhere over here, right? And my minimum value is negative 17 over 2. So like 16 over 2 is 8. So like a little bit down here where the 8s are. And that's your minimum value. So the graph turns here, right? Because this vertex would be 5 over 2 comma negative 17 over 2. Just to guys give you a little context. Now... Let's do the next one. Same idea though, all right? So first off, let's find out if we have a min, whoop, let's find out if we have a min or a max value. Remember, the a value is what gives it away. So here I just have a negative over here, right? My a value would be what? A negative one. If you don't have a number here, it's automatically just a, a one, so a negative one. And if I just go along, I have a positive 4 and I have a plus 3. So this would be B equals 4 and C equals 3. But I have an A value of negative 1, so I know that it's frowny, right? This is a frown, and frowns go with max values. So I have a max value here. I have a maxima or I have a maximum value. Just to give it some context, if I quickly drew this graph, I know that I have a frowny face, and that vertex is the highest on the Y. However, I don't know whether it's, you know, the intersection is here. I don't know if it's above, but I know that it has to be a frowny. If you hear the, uh, the car that's blowing up, it's a BMW. <laughs> Wait, what, what is that called? The, the, the pop, pop, pops. Chances are it is a BMW. Let me know in the comments if it's a different car, but I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure it's always a BMW. 
Anyway, let's keep moving. <laughs> so, uh, we know that we have a frown, we have a max value, we need to find that number, and remember it comes from the vertex. Remember the vertex is x comma y, h comma k, right? Axis of symmetry is the h value, the actual value is the k. But we can always find the h first. So h is always equal to negative b over 2a. We got our a, b's, and c's, so all we got to do is just plug it in. We have a negative 4, because that's our b value, divided by 2 times a negative 1. So just clean this up. I have a negative 4 divided by negative 2, so my h value is a 2. Okay, so we answered the first piece of the puzzle. But remember, when we state that it's an axis of symmetry, I can't say h equals 2. I have to say x equals 2. That is the axis of symmetry. Okay. So that's the answer to the, well, the second part. you got to find the second part, the axis of symmetry, before you get that value. So, number two. We got to find that k, and remember, k is just f of h. The h value was the 2. So if my formula is negative x squared plus 4x plus 3, and my h value was a 2, I'm going to plug in 2 for all of my x values. So I have a negative 2, and that's all being squared plus 4 times 2, and then plus 3. Quickly, let's run through this math, right? We have 2 times 2 is 4. However, there's a negative out here, so it would be negative 4. Plus 4 times 2 is 8, plus 3. This is easy to simplify, right? Negative 4 plus 8 is a 4, plus 3, which is 7, and that is my k value. And the k value is the value of the max value here, because we have a maxima, or we have a maximum value. So, there you go. Um, guys, let me know in the comments what you thought. Give this video a thumbs up if it helped you. Uh, subscribe to the channel if you want. And yeah, I love doing these videos for you guys. I hope you guys are learning. And I hope you're doing great in your math class and all of your other classes. Um, I will see you guys all in the next video. All right, let's keep going. We love math. Well, at least I do. Yeah, that's okay. All right, I'll see you guys all in the next lesson. Bye-bye.